morning, afternoon, and evening to our viewers. Thank you for joining us uh, for our webinar today, Improving Media Asset Workflow Management Storage and Archive, Four Keys to Success. Joining us today are Scott Ike, Pre-Sales Manager at EMAM, and Sanjay Jagat, Senior Director of Products and Solutions at Cloudian. Welcome, Scott and Sanjay. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Thanks, Laura. I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Scott. Okay, uh, so what does your environment look like today for um, media asset management and storing content? Um, most customers have a multiple ingest systems. You know, where do the files come from? There's many different sources and uh, locations are common in most uh, installs. So everything from remote news camera people to uh, cell phone user, GoPro user, all the way up to the professional movie sets where an editor is directing everything and uh, everything in between basically. And what are the file formats that come into the system? Multiple editors? Most sites have multiple editors. Um, what we're seeing in many cases is that each director may have a copy of an asset and this asset may or may not have the same, um, uh, or the editors may or may not have the same files as somebody else is using when they're editing. Um, so many times the user is requesting or relying on somebody else to give them uh, an asset via maybe a shuttle on a hard drive. Um, and then the question comes up, what happens when the workstation um, crashes, you know, that somebody's doing editing on, um, especially if that, that's the only location where that asset happens to reside. Multiple uh, separate storages and archive systems. We do see that as well, where many uh, sites have multiple um, locations for their content. You might even have a, a wall of hard drives to multiple RAIDs to a single LTO drive or maybe a whole LTO library. Um, how do you find your content? Um, multiple asset managers. You might have um, users that are out there trying to find content. How do you find it? Um, Excel spreadsheets is what we hear over and over. Um, they have an Excel spreadsheet that says this content's on this LTO tape number or it's on a hard drive sitting in this particular location. Go find the software or the asset. So that makes it really difficult to find the assets and bring it back to somebody that really needs it. Um, and then also trying to look at the video itself and find out is this video really what I need or not? And then uh, what's wrong with your media asset environment? Questions come up, is it a lack of scalability? Is that inhibiting your capacity to, to, for expansion? Um, yes or no. Does it limit your performance if you're using off the shelf hard drives to find and utilize your content? Or is your environment difficult and expensive to fix? Does it uh, push your organization to build excess capacity? Yes or no. Um, what about the lack of access to your content? Is there remote access to your content or, or do you have to be on premise to find your content and use it? Um, and then the question begs to be que uh, answered, do you even need to access your content really? Or is it just a pipe dream at this point? Getting access to your content can involve red tape in many organizations. Uh, you may have to wait for somebody to access that content and then give it to an editor physically and that might take some time. And are you able to find the content you want to even use? So you may not be able to uh, find it. It might be on a storage somewhere um, long term and you just don't have an easy way to find that content. So what's wrong with your uh, media asset environment? I, I do want to highlight something that you bring up out here. This is Sanjay uh, from Cloudian. What, what comes up uh, that uh, we have seen from various different customers that we have worked in is that uh, what you just said in your previous slide, the silos that are created because uh, their legacy environments were such and structured in a way that, you know, and they didn't talk to each other, right? You know, there were media asset managers or there would be different libraries or different storage medias. And this is all basically uh, problems waiting for, um, like, you know, having serious impact on your workflows. So I completely agree with what you just said around lack of ED, lack of scalability, lack of access. So jumping on to the next slide, right, and then expanding on that. So Scott, um, what we have seen is that this disconnected environments and this disconnected silos, this basically add too much overhead and spending. It's basically really makes it very inefficient because you are doing 
processes that are not uh, not lined up in the sense like you know one person is doing the same work in different silos um, so you're adding extra overhead um, and it's difficult to control because now you have to enforce security measures you have to enforce access measures in each of this environment and it's just like you know uh, each individual silo is just continuing ballooning into its own big pain uh, that needs to be managed the, Correct. And how do you know the, if you're using the same content as somebody else, the gold standard versus uh, an older piece? There's no uh, accountability for that. Absolutely. So so if you look at uh, what's wrong, right, you know, so to me, if you go to the next slide, um, um, the biggest challenge, and this is true in the IT in general, which is more exaggerated in the media company and the media flows is... Uh, um, budgets are shrinking, right? You know, and the staff is shrinking, and all the you know, the team is asked to do more and more. And with those different silos that we were talking about, has become um, very difficult to sustain and support this growth with the new media files. If you look at the HD files, the 4K, 8K resolutions, and the amount of capacity that amount of as media assets that are being generated. It's it's not literally possible to to manage your budget as well as your staff and as I was saying operational and capex expenses and still be able to do this correctly. I know and you can chime in and say like you know for us we're seeing that um, the the video content right you know is becoming a dominant uh, uh, form of expression right um, so sure yep. a lot of people want to talk about show videos. So what, do you That's see correct. that in the industry? Um, like, you know, how, how much of this video management and video asset management has become uh, a big uh, ask from a lot of these companies? We, we do see uh, quite a bit of video. Um, the questions come in from all kinds of sources, whether it be from government or uh, the news organizations out there, down to individual churches, you know, like larger churches, for example, um, famous people, they all have video assets that they need to store and be able to sort and find when they need them. But it's a huge challenge for them because a lot of those cases, they, they've got hard drives sitting somewhere, um, find the, the content. How do they repurpose it? How do they um, reuse it? How do they share it? Um, so that is getting to be more and more common as, uh, as we go forward. And it doesn't have to be um, broadcasters. You know, it, like I mentioned, it could be right down to a, a small church that needs to organize their content that they've got. Yeah, and I think that brings up a very interesting thing, right? You know, we are living in this world where it's a global uh, economy, right? So um, managing this across different geographies is also very important. So what is so what is the success? Let's talk about success. How do you overcome all those limitations? We talked about all these pain points, budgets, silos, to me, uh, the first step on success is basically to look at the 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 asset, uh, the storage component, right? You know, because that's where all this media gets stored, right? Now, and you need to make sure that the the storage is something that can be used across different flows, right? And not only for your um, for your backup and archive, but also can be available for your video and content distribution, right? Now, so you want to unify your storage ensure that it's highly scalable it's very cost efficient and not only that right you know take it's like you know uh, the right horses for the right courses right you know you want to make sure that uh, the 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 storage technology is is an enabler for your media workflows and what i mean by that is it's something that uh, allows you to uh, look and search for a particular asset as and when you need it like you know, that that has been a pain in in a lot of this media customers that we talk to. Right? You know, the tape libraries are great, but you can store lots and lots of data. But you know, those are the data is not alive. The assets, media assets, are not alive. Right? You know, to recover from a tape, it takes you days, if not hours, uh, and uh, you have to do a lot more things to minimize the the copies and duplication. Right? You know. Uh, the workflow of restoring trips and all those things is not easy. Um, so you need something that is easy to search the asset, and you need something that you can categorize those assets and be able to search on it. 
improve that's something that helps uh, improve the productivity by saving time and also be a very cost effective store um, right. the second part of that is now to make sure that uh, those media assets are are properly protected right you know you want to make sure that you know there are teams within this company and as you said right if you're breaking down the silos and this uh, different departments and different work uh, these things it's very important that uh, you still maintain and if you're consolidating this on a single storage piece that you still maintain the right control and right access to the assets to which group does it belong to right so you need to protect that you need to protect and uh, make it easy for for the admins and the the person managing this infrastructure to say um, uh, provide the controls as and when needed to which particular group, right? Now it 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 makes it um, uh, a story around. Anytime you talk about consolidation, you want to make sure that you know you have different tenants and be able to meet the different SLA service level objectives uh, for those particular clients. So you need to make sure that the storage or the infrastructure that you select, and including this goes all the way up, right, uh, Scott to um, to the media asset uh, things um, where you're still wanting to maintain that control uh, across the the top level, right? Correct. Yeah. If if, uh, if you have an asset management system on, in the front of the storage, you can easily assign the user or the user group permission to see a, a specific category of content and give them access to maybe um, what they can download, what they can't download, what they can uh, deliver. Um, if they're able to even access it at all um, to edit with. So security is a, a huge point. Um, and when you're previewing an asset, um, you got to have a way to make sure that um, somebody that's not access, uh, has access to download, can't just make a, a quick copy of it and distribute that outside. So definitely uh, security is a huge concern for most customers. Um, that's nice. Yep, and, and that brings us to a success key, which is an integrated system. Um, you need to find a, uh, a system that easily can take the, uh, the storage, the silos, and make them into one uh, system where you can easily find content regardless of where it is. Um, so that avoids the inefficiency in the manual process of trying to find the content. Where is it? Is it on silo one? Is it on a hard drive? Is it on LTO? Where is it? Um, and then you can build workflows around that to say um, once you ingest content into into the system, what happens to it? Does it uh, change metadata automatically? Does it uh, deliver to somebody automatically based on permissions? Um, does it get archived to another uh, S3 bucket or what happens? So you can build uh, um, workflows around the MAM system and the storages. Um, question comes over uh, with uh, minimizing overhead. Um, again, we're, we're talking about multiple storage systems, uh, silos. Um, do you need multiples or do you just need one? Um, that's something that each individual uh, site would have to answer, but uh, minimizing the uh, overhead is a huge concern for most customers. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean hardware. I mean, that could be personnel. Uh, how much does it cost to get content back from whatever storage, whether it be somebody running around with a hard drive, whether it be somebody, um, again, looking at Excel documents to try to find the content. And that, of course, would save time with a man, um, multimedia asset management system. They can easily search for content based on metadata or maybe uh, categories, um, find that asset quick and easy, and then be able to restore it or deliver it, saves time and expense. I think as we've been talking about this, right? You know, and uh, you absolutely hit the nail on the on the head out here, right? Uh, that you need to talk about integrated systems. So that that basically goes into the success factor number four, and that and what that means is, is you basically now um, have to think about all the things that are happening and plan for the future, right? You know, previously it was that you invest in certain infrastructure, you you basically are are looking at the growth rates which are very much in and like you know of uh, very uh, stable growth rates 
But with the kind of media assets that we see right now and what this capacity and the storage footprint that is, we're seeing this like a hockey stick, right? The capacity and the growth is, is phenomenal in terms of uh, how fast and those capacity can be filled up. And that brings an interesting challenge, right? You know, you want to plan for the future. You want to make sure that when you buy and grow that capacity, you don't want to buy all everything up front, but you need the system that can allow you to add things as you grow and does not create more disruptions, right? You know, there are companies who would do this, like, you know, where you would say, okay, I can add on this few nodes, but then it requires a migration or forklift upgrades. That's not what you want. You're basically adding more to your, you, that's why you want uh, your integrated system that is easy to configure, that is easy to change, um, is based on standards, right? You know, you don't want to build a, something on proprietary technology because that's a recipe for disaster as we move ahead, right? Now you want something that uh, is uh, based on standards like an S3 APIs now, which has become a de facto standard when it comes to accessing highly scalable object storage. Uh, and this has led to companies like, like Amazon and now everybody seems to be adopting this particular thing. So you want to work with proven technologies, proven companies, proven uh, the standard space solutions that uh, that allows you to manage this growth in a in a very low cost effective uh, manner and that's that's the key in terms of success so jumping onto that uh, talking about how how does Cloudian and EMAM solution help right so but let me jump into what does Cloudian mean what Cloudian is is an on-prem software-defined object storage that is S3 API compatible. And now we, we basically provide a solution that aligns with the modern uh, need around uh, highly scalable storage, which is highly durable uh, can, uh, and a very cost efficient, right? So it allows you to start small um, and then go up to hundreds of terabytes um, it can be uh, spread across multiple locations, so it's a very distributed system. Um, so you don't need to worry about uh, having a solution that is uh, um, that is only locked in for one particular data center. You can make sure that the cluster or the scale happens across your data center, so that data is always available. Um, and it's high, and it's really, really economical. We're talking about price points that are cheaper than cloud. You're talking about half a cent per gig per month. And and not only just it's economical, it has all the robust enterprise class features that you would want in your in your enterprise storage uh, systems. I don't know, it has the ability to do, as I mentioned, S3. It's an object store, so it has rich metadata. It also can support uh, an enterprise NAS functionality like SIPs, NFS, um, not only that, it it can make sure that you know if you have legacy applications that you want to use the same storage. So this is again talking about the unifying uh, some silos and breaking down those silos. You need to make sure that the system is capable of doing more than just one. It's not a one-trick pony. So you can do file, you can do object, and be able to convert the file data into an object so that it can enable those workflows and allow you to transition from from an on-prem to a cloud. Plus, it seamlessly integrates with your EMAM environments, right? So all the different EMAM tools yep. that you have, it seamlessly integrates into that. Going right. a little bit further into the Cloudian HyperStore, so um, I'll just give this one slide on what it is because we want to talk about the solution. But uh, the, the cloud in HyperStore, as I was saying, it provides you the richest enterprise feature sets, right? You know, we're talking about policy-based data protection, right? You know, so you can have one bucket that you want to protect across different sites. You can set those granular policies on your bucket. So um, you can meet different SLAs for different groups. Um, it allows you to create multi-tenancies and QoS. Anytime you talk about scale-out, multi-tenancy is an integral part of it. Because if you are consolidating multiple environments on a single system, you need to have multi-tenant environment. And as I mentioned, right, you, know, you need to make sure that these systems that you are investing in is based on standards. You know, at Cloudian, we offer native 
100% native S3 implementation. And what that means is, um, like, you know, we support, we provide the highest compatibility of S3 APIs in the industry. Now, you'll see a lot of S3 APIs, but uh, um, some of those key elements that basically help with performance, like multipath upload, signature, V4 signatures, those things are missing. And that's not what the application wants, right? So you don't want a solution that only works for one or two applications. You want to make sure that the S3 APIs that your storage provides is compliant so that, you know, it supports the entire ecosystem of S3 applications that are out there. So you don't have to re-architect and then again create new environments and new storage solutions. The solution allows you to tier on a policy base to a public cloud of your choice. So you're not locked into a particular cloud. It can be Azure, it could be Amazon, it could be Google. A single system, as I mentioned earlier, for files and objects. And in a highly durable, right? You know, in the old traditional systems, you would say, oh yeah, we support five nines and six nines. But with object store, you're talking about any number of nines, right? You know, typically you see 14 nines of durability means your data is always available. It, it, it can not only sustain drive failures, it can not only sustain node failures, it can sustain data center failures and still make sure that your data is available and to do that at a very cost efficient way, half a cent per gig per month. That's what you're looking for when you're looking for a new uh, storage platforms. Um, and then uh, the EMAM piece of that connecting to uh, the storage is EMAM is a um, media asset management system that uh, makes search uh, actually, the interoperability is uh, to automate a complete workflow. Um, best of breed in integrations, whether it be the storage like uh, Cloudian or Amazon or Azure, um, we work with all of all of the um, best of breed systems out there, and we pr uh, promote a, a complete automated workflow. Flexibility: um, we can work on premise. We can work in the cloud 100%, or we can have a hybrid model where you might have multiple um, locations that are, are scattered across the country or across the world, where you might have the uh, uh, database and the web interface up in, say, Amazon or Azure, and, and multiple application servers across the, the world um, doing the transcoding and storing the content either locally or up in the cloud. So uh, EMAM is very flexible on how you want to have it set up. Configurability, we've developed a, uh, a web interface that makes it very easy to add new con um, storages to the system um, so they're very easily deployed and easily changed. Um, User-defined workspaces, so a lot of um, MAM systems have a, a rigid interface, whereas we are using HTML5 and you can drag and drop widgets all over the uh, user's workspace based on their uh, permissions on what they have access to see and they can build their own workspace so it could be as complicated as a editor would like to see or it could be as simple as uh, an end user so they don't see a lot of things working on the screen at one time so it's totally uh, uh, user defined intuitive because it is a uh, user defined we can make it as easy to use as possible um, and it's based on a, uh, a local web browser or you can also access the interface via a, a tablet like iOS or Android. Secure. So we can um, have granular permission sets, and this is all based on the categories. So you organize your content based on categories, and users have access to those categories based on the permissions. And that, again, lets them have the ability to see the content, download the content, uh, search based on metadata or tags. Um, access control from LDAP or Samuel, or they can have local users. And scalability, uh, you could start with a EMAM system as small as a vault system, which is uh, an archive solution where we connect to the storage, you upload the content, you add metadata, you find it, and you deliver it. Um, and if your system grows and you need to push content to maybe a social media or um, an editor, um, you can add more systems, uh, servers to the system to keep continuing make it grow. Um, there's no need to toss out the system because it's too small for you. You just add more components, add more users, add more servers, add more storage. Um, and we also offer a, a cluster uh, using Microsoft Windows clustering system for uh, 
performance or for DR. How does EMAM work? Uh, basically, it's uh, acquire the assets. Where are the assets coming from? They could be from hard drives, they could be from cameras, um, whatever source you have. So we acquire the assets and then we organize the assets. Um, again, organization is based on categories. So you can take uh, assets for maybe a customer or a project and organize them that way. And based on the user, who has permission to see those uh, uh, categories? Then the next area is uh, create. So uh, you can take the assets via a, a plugin we have with Adobe Premiere and uh, create a rough cut of the content and then deliver that to a Premiere editor, for example. They go ahead and edit it and uh, uh, submit a file for uh, approval rejection workflow back within the EMAM system. Um, delivering the content, we can deliver the content pretty much anywhere in the world, um, whether it be the hard drive next to you, to an OTT, to a new system. Uh, it doesn't really matter to us. And uh, a lot of times the delivery uh, requires somebody to transcode the file from one file format to another. We can do that as well. And then uh, archive, where are the files being stored long term? Um, so we work with uh, many different vendors on archive and um, S3 is getting to be more and more popular for archive. So the benefits of EMAM, uh, basically like it's slide says, tearing down the walls, uh, complexity, uh, how complex is it to find the content that you're looking for? Um, are you, uh, having issues with lost footage, finding the footage, um, whether it be on a, a tape or a, a spinning disc or the cloud, uh, we can work with all of those. Department boundaries, um, you might have a, uh, a division that's video only, you might have a, a pre-press division, you might have um, an office situation where they all wanna store the, their files, whether it be video or graphics or Word documents, all in one system, multiple locations. You might have somebody in uh, London and somebody in San Francisco, but they need to work on the same files. So you have everything all in one uh, um, storage bucket, whether that be up in the cloud or whether that be uh, local at different facilities and then um, transfer the content between those local facilities. Security issues, you know, who has access to these files? Um, you're gonna definitely wanna limit that. And we spoke about that earlier. And potentially different systems. Uh, many sites have, uh, everything from uh, the cloud to a on-premise uh, storage system to an LTO system. Uh, we can integrate into all of those. But it really does empower you and your customers to use the content you already have. This is what a um, EMAM and Cloudian integration would look like. So EMAM is the center. So we're the database holding all the information uh, that's stored out there. So like I mentioned before, you would have ingest, whether that be tape, live feed, hard drives, or um, media files. We ingest that into the EMAM system. From there, we manage the files, and it allows you to edit the files, um, and then archive the files to a, a storage. And whether that storage be um, uh, S3 bucket, or like Sanjay said, they also support um, NFS. So you can mount that as an NFS storage for an editor, use as a live um, working storage. And then we can also send the content out to uh, different um, vendors, whether it be a playout system or web or mobile tablets to uh, use that content. Yeah, I think, Scott, the key word, if you look at the next slide, is the integrated solution, right? You know, so we talked about breaking down the silos. We talked about breaking down uh, different uh, workflows into a single consolidated workflows and that's what emam does mm -hmm. emam the the technology the emam uh what it does on the in the media asset management side of things and what claudian does on the storage side of it it's a perfect blend and it's a perfect integrated solution in the sense that uh, you guys uh, emam can simplify the media asset management be a different source as you were referring to and at Cloudian, what we do is make and enable that particular uh, functions, right? You know, we, uh, since being an object store, provide rich metadata that allows you to quickly search for your media files. We make sure that uh, in a highly scalable uh, storage environment that can, um, that can grow uh, based on your needs, um, can also make sure that it's available across different 
uh, geos and different data centers can make sure that the platform can support files so that you can enable uh, different media uh, tools. Um, and, and lastly, but not, and the most important piece out here is it's a comprehensive single management story, right? You know, you're not uh, talking about silos, you're talking about uh, a workflow that, uh, that can be easily managed and by a, a, an individual rather than having a team of uh, people managing your different silos. So it, it drastically Correct. breaks down breaks down the operational uh, challenges and makes it very simple so that it's very cost effective, cost effective. And then on the storage side and the infrastructure side, it gives you an enterprise class storage, a highly efficient storage, highly cost benefit storage, right? Which is based on industry standards. It's single platform, rich feature sets and tools, can scale to meet all your needs and enables new levels of production. And that's that's what we we have to offer in this particular solution. So with that, I think we'll open up to the Q&A and see if anybody has any questions. Great, thank you, Scott, Sanjay. So uh, here's the first question. It's what OS and database does EMAM use? Uh, yeah, so EMAM uses a uh, Microsoft Windows 2012 R2 or uh, 2016 server, and uh, the database that we would use would be uh, Microsoft SQL uh, 2014, 2016. Okay, great. So industry industry standard. Next question is, we use tape for our backup and archive needs as it offers the lowest TCO. How does the TCO of your solution compare with tape? So well, um, this is a really, really good question because we often get asked about this by a lot of our customers. You know, there's been a debate uh, in terms of whether the tape provides the, the cheapest means of storage. Uh, and, the, and the answer is no. In fact, you know, tape might be cheap from a, a, just the raw media perspective. But if you look at what, what is happening in this uh, industry today, as we talked about, right, you know, the media assets are growing. And when you're looking at uh, archiving this to tape, there are, there are workflows that are associated with managing tape price, right? You know, you need to make sure that you are seeding the tape. The system is not only just the tape media, which is what people compare typically when they do TCO, it's the library and the generation of tape drives that can support, right? Uh, what is needed to stage those libraries. If you're talking about petabytes of storage, you need a staging area because your backups will not finish. The tape writing will not finish on time. And then, then the whole idea around, hey, let me move this tape and store it in two copies. So now you have doubled your cost. And the second copy is sitting somewhere in some salt mines so that now when you have to bring it back, you have to wait for eight hours. So you don't know whether that would be readable because the media, uh, tape media basically erodes over a period of time. So you need to bring them back in and restore and rewrite all those things. Those workflows are, when you look at now the modern technologies that what object store brings, you need to compare this with the operational cost that is associated with managing tape drives, not, not just the tape media, the system, right? And if you look at those things um, and then compare it to the modern day solution that what Object Store brings, it's a highly scalable storage solution at half a cent per gig per month uh, when you're talking about the capacities. And, and it's easily searchable, so you don't have to worry about like, you know, finding the right tape drives. Uh, so your media and your asset is at your hands as and when you need it. Unlike in tape, it's it's like you know uh, the data is not alive. Um, so to me, um, if you look at and we did this uh, TCO analysis with them based on some industry standard cost and working with our customers, Object Store provides a highly effective, in fact, 50 to 60 percent lower TCO than tape drives. And I highly encourage you to engage with someone. Uh, from Claudian, or or at least reach out and ask us about that study, and we'll be more than happy to share about that. Um, next question. I have a number of departments, so we have different file formats to manage. Does Emam only manage video assets? No, actually, uh, Emam grew up with uh, video to begin with, um, but we've got a lot of customers that have uh, different departments. So, like I mentioned before, uh, you might have a pre-press department or an office that have uh, different types of files that they want to um, manage. So whether that be uh, graphics 
or uh, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, that kind of uh, file formats. Um, EMAM can easily manage all those. Um, and in addition, you can, since they're just assets as far as EMAM is concerned, you can always add metadata uh, to those files as well to make them easily searchable. I am looking at a number of different cloud vendors um, with Cloudian. Am I locked into one cloud storage vendor? No, the answer is absolutely no, right? You know, what we do is we provide an S3 API based, standards based uh, uh, storage, but we also let you tier to any of the public cloud of your choice, right? You know, um, and in fact, what we do is when we tier to those public clouds, we basically store the data in the native cloud format. So if it's Azure, we'll store it as blob so that you, you are not locked in. In fact, we, we, the Cloudian solution enables uh, customers to have multi-cloud solutions. You have a freedom to switch between clouds as and when needed and just do that through a simple policy engine on Cloudian. You can describe the policies that you want and you can describe the the cloud vendor that you want to connect with and the cloud end will take care of the rest. Can I have, have custom metadata or do I have a limited number of fields? Yeah, so as far as EMAM is concerned, um, you can have as many metadata fields as you want um, and they're totally customizable. So uh, you can have, um, let's say, a, a group of people that um, are editors and you have, um, I don't know, maybe 10 different metadata fields for them. Um, that's great. Then you might have another group of people that are um, uh, ingest people that would have totally different metadata fields. So you can have metadata fields that are customized to different groups of people. So they're only looking at their metadata. And you might have an admin group potentially that uh, might have uh, access to all of the metadata fields that you've created in the system. Um, what's unique about EMAM is we can take those metadata fields and export them in a XML for file format of the um, other vendor's choice if they need to have the uh, metadata sent to them. And with um, the S3, such as Cloudian, we can take that metadata and wrap it around the, the file itself and push it to the storage. So yeah, you can definitely have as many metadata fields as you want and they're totally customizable. And I think that's the key part that you mentioned, right? You know, with Cloudian, what we can do is we can take that custom metadata and make it part of the object. So not only just that you have your standard metadata, but you can add more data so that it makes it easier for people to search, find between groups and all those things. And that's the beauty. That's another advantage over tape medias and archives, the modern archive technologies. Okay. Another question. You spoke about always on um, and highly available. How does Cloudian ensure this? Cloudian, by inheritance, as I was saying, right, the object store technology, the architecture that we have uh, in within the within the the Cloudian uh, technology is a highly scalable peer-to-peer -peer architecture, which is highly durable. So we can support 14.9. So, as I mentioned at that time, in the when describing the Cloudian features, we can support not only just drive failures, not failures, but including data center failures because we can configure the, the Cloudian cluster to have different storage policies that allow you to have this high levels of data durability and making sure that it's always available, it's always there for when you need it, where you need it. If you want to start off small, can the EMAM system be grown to accommodate my workload? Yeah, so basically uh, what EMAM does is it's, it's Windows based and we've got uh, different services for the different functions within EMAM. And as your work, uh, workload increases, um, you might need to split those uh, services off onto different machines. Um, you might have, um, say, one server that's dedicated to just the database work. You might have another server that's dedicated to uh, uh, just the web traffic getting to the system, and another server that's uh, just doing the transcode and uh, delivery of the content to maybe the S3 or um, uh, sending it to archive whatever. So depending on where your, your uh, bottleneck is in your workflow, you can add another server and move the service or add another service to grow your system. Um, like I mentioned before, you could start something small like an, uh, a vault, EMAM vault, which is uh, an archive module um, and go to a, a uh, another module, which would be our social media module to push content to different social medias. 
um, you might have uh, another workflow later on that you would want to edit it. So then you would have another module on to the system. So definitely EMAP can grow as you grow your, uh, your workflows. Thank you, Scott, Sanjay, again for your time um, and the great presentation. To learn more uh, about EMAM, go to embrismam.com and for Cloudian, cloudian.com. Thank you again to our audience for joining us and feel free to reach out.